Hi folks, welcome back to Black Bears Detailing's YouTube channel. Today we have a review on my Cranzo Firm CA11-130. I bought it February 2021, I've had it for about six months now. I wanted to get a right good bit of use in it before I actually done the review, so I could be as in-depth as possible and uncover any foibles. I kinda have a wee love-hate relationship with this thing. I get rid of my K10, the 122 TS model, to get this. And as good as it is, it's had its little issues. So it says, I bought it February 2021. I bought it from Elite Car Care. It cost £3,250. I got no money off, nothing like that. My own money, so I can say pretty much what I want to say about it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the whole ins and outs and the, the figures because you can read that on the website. It's pointless me just regurgitating it all. But what's really important is that good uh, 11 litres flow minute coming through because that's what gives that really nice thick snow foam, especially when it's paired with the, the variable pressure you can put it to. So it's between 30 and 130 bars, which is absolutely fantastic. And again, you don't need to focus in so much on that bar pressure, it's more that 11 litres which is getting forced through the end of that nozzle or the end of your snow foam lance to create that nice big thick foam and give that really powerful cleaning. Add into the mix the heat which it can kick out so it can generally put out between, I think it's between 12 and 82 degrees centigrade water constantly. You can up that uh, to steam and you can bring it up to 140 degrees centigrade but you then need to reduce your, your pressure down so it's got that chance to build up that steam pressure. Uh, we'll bring the camera around and I'll move the camera around the machine, I'll show you some of the different control panels and that on it, we'll talk about how I've found it and we'll go in and we'll actually show you the, the machine being used. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, we'll be back in a wee second. Okay, so as you can see, this is the front of the machine. This is where we fill it up with diesel. It's uh, it can be quite difficult to oh, to fasten it up and undo it. Uh, so, yep, in there, nice big wide nozzle to get the the jerry can nozzle in there and to fill it up. Uh, everybody's use is going to be slightly different. Uh, I usually find between every kind of four or five cars, I fill it up, but. This isn't a quick kind of wash and go. Uh, the cars are getting washed quite extensively, including arches, undercarriage, all that stuff. So I probably will go through it a bit more diesel than a typical user. Uh, the, the full front cover comes off. I'll just show you this so you have an idea of what is actually underneath. So we have the burner in here, and then you've got your obviously this your diesel fuel tank, uh, your fuel filter, and your pump for the diesel. Uh, the machine itself is quite noisy, it's quite rattly, which I was quite disappointed in, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, when I got the machine, I had an issue with it. It was refusing to, to fire up. I had to keep on pulsing the, uh, the lance to eventually get it to fire, and you could see through the, the top of the, uh, there's a wee viewing point uh, in there. You could see when it was, when it was, it was basically starting up. Uh, phoned Cranzo and they basically asked me to take uh, these sections off, this section, make sure everything was all plugged in. It was loose going into the, what I assume is the ignition uh, section in there. Uh, one of these were loose, so that was plugged in and uh, it worked for about 30 seconds and then cut out yet again. At that point, phoned them, wasn't too happy when I was given instructions on how to start stripping the thing down. At that point, I think I'd had it for two days and I was just told on point blank, absolutely no way, I'm not stripping down a brand spanking new unit. Uh, and this was obviously during COVID times, uh, everything is, is delayed and uh, some, maybe not so much excuses, but uh, there was some hurdles put in the way about getting somebody out to get it done ASAP because they would have to travel because I was in Scotland. At the end of the day, that's not my issue. It's a brand new machine. should have been sorted. So, with the help of a, an, a, basically a gas engineer a, who works with the unit dead opposite me, we removed this, this top plate 
and there's a couple of little screw, almost kind of thumb, thumb screw fuses and one of them was loose and it turned out when it was operating it was going, it was shaking, it was actually coming out so really quite poor given the, the, the price point of this and given Kranzel's reputation of building really good machinery uh, that being loose, uh, one of these, not sure which one it was and the actual fuse inside there uh, not uh, not being fastened in correctly so uh, yeah not very happy with that but I'll pop this cover back on that's just held on by two Phillips head screws one there and the other down there so I'll just set that on the now just while we're moving around the machine and round to a side you can see we've got this which is protected from the elements which is quite good so we have our needle gauge here, there's fluid inside there that's completely normal, it's glycol and it's there to make sure that the needle doesn't jump about when it's in operation. We've got our uh, thermostat here so we can change the, uh, the, the water temperature about. Strangely this wee white line that's there, I put that wee white line on myself, it didn't actually come with that so it just makes it a bit easier to see should there be mist in there and it's, uh, and it's a bit kind of difficult to pick up. Uh, so we've got two switches, main switch and burner switch. Main switch, obviously self-explanatory, turn that on, it powers up the machine. The burner is of course to turn on the burner. And then we can adjust our temperature just like that. Lower down on the back of the machine, we have our chemical mixer. So we can turn that on and turn it off. And this is the chemical hose here. It does have a filter attached at the end of it as well to prevent any nasties getting travelled up through it. And it's got a screw in section there should you wish to kind of bolt it into a bucket or anything like that. Uh, everything feels really good, really solid. Uh, the switches, everything all feel pretty well, uh, well insulated, especially taking the, the machine apart, which obviously I didn't want to do. But still, it, it felt really robust and felt really ironically uh, well made. Uh, the power cable as well, really thick uh, gauge cable. Uh, the, we've got uh, 10 metres of cable on the end of this, so plenty of scope for moving about your machine. And the last thing on the back of it is our uh, pressure uh, release, or sorry, our pressure uh, adjusting valve. So turn it to right hand side to bring the pressure right up and left hand side to bring the pressure down. You can keep on thinging this round all you want until it stops. Basically it won't just keep free spinning and it's fairly obvious when it gets to that point. Uh, lower down we'll see a little foot rest there. You can put your foot in there and basically push down and pull up the handle tilts it round and you can move the machine left, right and we've also got a brake under there as well which prevents the machine from moving about and then our water inlet as well. So I'll give you a wee quick show how to actually move it about because it's quite, it is a very heavy machine, it's over 100 kilograms in weight so uh, you, you do need a bit of kind of uh, kind of manhandle it about a bit to get it moved. Thankfully mine just lives in the corner, uh, the only time it's been moved is actually just to make this video. So put your foot in this section there and then angle it all the way up and then you can push it left to right and back down again. The brake operation, you can use it by foot and that's it on and off, it's quite simple and easy to do. You've got four wheels on either side, uh, they're not rubberized, they're kind of, sorry they are rubberized, they're not uh, kind of cheap plastic so they don't kind of slide about the floor and they do grip, grip quite well. So what we'll do next is we will do a little practical demonstration of the machine actually working. We'll just use my car as a guinea pig, show you the steam, uh, the, the heat, the, what you can expect through uh, snow foam, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I've actually found the machine whilst I've been using it for the past six months. Okay, so the lance that you get supplied, again, typical Kranzel, very robust, very well made. It's actually quite heavy underhand. It also comes with the lock function as well. So if you want to lock it in place, if you're using this in the driveway, if you've got wee ones running about, then it'll prevent that accidental uh, activation. 
Uh, it's got the quick lock as well, so you can undo that and then you can put on little short nozzles uh, and just no foam lines as well. So again, it's just on and then give it a wee tug to make sure it's on all right. Uh, the, to turn it on, again, you'll, you'll know this, is there, that's it, on and off with the trigger. Uh, so right now it's set to 130 bar. Uh, the burner is turned off, so it's just cold water and we're going to go around and we're going to do a wee demonstration on the car. Okay folks, so I'm going to go through the pre-washing now. Pre-wash is turned on on the pressure washer. The temperature is set to 60 degrees and uh, the barrel in which the pre-wash is in is set to one part pre-wash to 200 parts water. So this is what it looks like going on to the vehicle. Okay, so as you can see, it's not overly soapy, anything like that, it is going on to a nice smooth surface. If you put it onto something that's a bit, uh, kind of jagged, it aerates it a bit, as you can see. And you can see a bit more of the, the chemical coming out. So that gives you an idea of what the pre-wash is like when that's turned on. Obviously, depending on the dilutions you're using, will kind of dictate just how foamy and how uh, soapy it comes out but again that's uh, entirely dependent on uh, your dilution ratios. Uh, at 60 degrees this is a bit toasty, you don't want to be holding this for too long, uh, you can still touch it, it's not scalding uh, but definitely recommend holding on via this especially if it's going hotter than 60 degrees. So we'll go and we'll put some snow foam on that and we'll show you how the snow foam looks. Okay, so we'll move on to the snow foam now. So the snow foam, 200ml snow foam and the rest of it topped up with water. So 1 to 5 ratio with, uh, with that. Uh, the brand is my own brand, Blackbeard's Detailing Stuff. So uh, again, be careful taking this off, it can be very hot. So grab it with your boots, lift up and make sure that that doesn't burn you at the end of it. That locks in happily, just make sure that's in. And then pressure washer set to maximum uh, pressure, uh, temperature set at 60, so exactly the same as the pre-wash. Uh, this set to full and uh, this will give you an idea of the snow foam. So as you can see, we've got nice snow foam coming out there, some steam coming up off it, just giving the, the temperature kind of change here. Uh, it's worth noting that the, the hotter the machine's set to, the waterier the snow foam comes out. If it's colder, it comes out like shaving foam. If it's hot, it comes out like, like this, basically. You're not wanting this, as we're going into a kind of detailing video here, you're not wanting your snow foam to sit on the car and sit on it for ages. You're wanting it to run down and to carry that dirt with it. So a bit of heat is great for that. So that's this full car being snow foamed, as you can see it's used quite a bit of that. So with a small kind of size car, you could probably get two cars out from your snow foam bottle. Large size car, you're looking at one. Uh, it's also worth notice this thing's been ceramic coated, like 
several times so the snow foam kind of struggles to actually stick to it at some places uh, just because of the coating that's on it but this gives you an idea of how the, the, the snow foam will come out we'll go in, we'll get this rinsed off and I'll show you ramp the pressure up and I'll show you the arch cleaning with it being set to a really really high temperature Okay, so next up, I'll show you the, the steam mode. I've done the pressure right down on the pressure washer and I've put the temperature up to 140 degrees. I've used this to great effect for cleaning arches, uh, especially kind of carpet arches. Under carriage, I've got a separate uh, device that connects onto this, which you can use basically wheels the underside of the car. Very, very effective, very, very good. Don't worry about using this in your paintwork though, the paint is, or the temperature is a bit too high for paintwork. So let's give you a wee idea. The temperature out here on my watch is shown as 19 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. So it's certainly not cold out here. So this will give you an idea when you see the steam belting out, just how much cleaning power this actually has. So yeah, as you can see, it's uh, very, very, very effective at cleaning arches. Uh, baked in grime, dirt, that's uh, the underside of the sills. You'd be amazed the amount of stuff that comes off the bottom of cars when we use this on them. So very, very effective and highly recommended for that type of cleaning. So as you can see, it's an incredibly good piece of kit. I would I recommend it? Absolutely, it does what it does really well despite those wee snagging problems that I had at the start. Noise and vibration is a bit annoying, however at the end of the day it is a pressure washer, it's a large unit, there's a lot of bits inside it, so I can kind of forgive that but I would just hope that it would just be that wee bit quieter sound, that bit more refined, especially at the price point. Uh, the wee things I've, I've kind of found on it is so again, this is entirely on me, is don't allow it to run out of diesel because holy hell does it fill this place up with diesel smoke. Uh, the first time it happened, unfortunately it's happened twice, uh, the first time it happened I genuinely thought there was something in here properly on fire. I was working outside, seeing smoke bellowing out from the inside of the unit. I thought the car, the main car that was inside I was working on, had actually went on fire, came belting in and realised that it was like a choo-choo train. It was just belting out masses of diesel smoke. It was disgusting. Every surface in here had to get cleaned and that. And you would have thought I would have learned from that mistake, but no, it ended up happening a second time and it hasn't happened since. So don't allow it to run out of diesel. Every couple of uh, jerry cans fill up, I fill it up with premium diesel, put that through it. Don't know if it makes any difference or not, but hey ho, we will see in the long run. I was also told by the chap at Cranzo, after I finish using the machine, uh, or using the burner, keep the burner switch turned on, turn the temperature all the way down to zero, and keep it running for a bit, because it will just clear that combustion chamber of any kind of sooty mess that's there. Uh, the diesel fumes aren't too bad when it's running, but I say they aren't too bad, they they're really aren't bad at all. Uh, when it's running, that shutter's normally fully open, so the, the fumes have got some place to go, they've got some place to, to leave, so it's not too bad. But all in all, I'm happy with it. A uh, fantastic bit of kit, and uh, if it's in your price range and you're looking for something like this, then it's an absolute, because it's a, a beast at what it does. It's really, really good, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. If you have liked this video, please like it and uh, it would help if you subscribed to my channel as well. Thank you for watching. Cheerio, bye.